good afternoon everyone the topic of this lecture is crypto orchidism which is synonymous with the undescended testes however one should be aware that these two terms are not the same thing crypto orchidism as the name suggest crypto means hidden orchidism means testes so when the testes are hidden then it the situation is known as crypto orchidism it can be due to various reasons which we'll be discussing in the subsequent slides but just in brief that sometimes there may be defect in the descent so the, those testes are called as undescended testes sometimes testes may be present but at other locations and in those conditions it could it is called as uh, ectopic testes so so starting with the topic for today the normal location of testes is that when the testes is placed at the bottom of the scrotum whenever testes is absent from the scrotum this situation is known as crypto orchidism this is the most common birth defect of male genitalia it has been known that around 30% of preterm newborns on and 3% of full term newborn boys have undescended testes and also it has been noted that 80% of these undescended testes descend by third month of life so the exact or the true incidence of undescended testes requiring some kind of management accounts to only 1% so the most of the cases are unilateral that uh, that are around 2/3 of the cases where right sided undescended testes are predominant 80% of these undescended testes are palpable testes while 20% are impalpable testes so just in brief about the testicular descent testicular descent is a multifactorial event which is controlled by various genes hormones hormones being testosterone insulin like factor 3 calcitonin gene related peptide also known as cgrp and there are few mechanical factors like gubernaculum cranial suspensory ligament and then others being intra abdominal pressure inguinal bursa processus vaginalis the testicular descent has been divided into various stages so i'll just discuss uh, or just enumerate uh, various steps that takes place initially a primordial germ cell originates from coelomic epithelium and it arises just medial to the mesonephros then later on the migration starts around 4 to 6 weeks so initially what happens as you can see in the stage wise manner what is being given it's that uh, initially the testes are being formed then there is a processus vaginalis formation which is uh, by the invagination of the coelomic cavity into the in scrotal uh, cavity then by the 7 month the testicular descent into the scrotum starts and after the birth there is obliteration of the processus vaginalis and for this a normal hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis is must now there are two phases transabdominal phase and inguinoscrotal phase so in transabdominal phase insulin like factor 3 plays a very important role it causes out gubernacular outgrowth as well as regression due to outgrowth there is sudden swelling into the uh, of the gubernaculum which dilates the inguinal canal and then there is regression of the uh, gubernaculum which leads to the remodeling and uh, for formation of the fibrous band which pulls the testes downwards also due to dilatation the processus vaginalis could be invaginate into the scrotal cavity so uh, and then the second stage inguinoscrotal phase which is predominantly uh, mediated with the effect of androgen 
in this when the processus vaginalis goes into the uh, goes via inguinal canal to scrotum it becomes surrounded by various cremastic uh, muscles and there is also genito femoral nerve the fetal testis then releases testosterone and this virilizes the sensory dorsal root ganglion of genito femoral nerve which further releases cgrp this cgrp causes rhythmic contraction of the gubernaculum due to this rhythmic contraction of the gubernaculum which is a vigorous contraction the testis is brought down into the scrotum from the inguinal canal so this is by and large what happens during the testicular descent as we have initially discussed that there are various types of crypto orchidism so i'll just touch upon them briefly the undescended testis which forms the largest chunk of crypto orchidism it is due to arrest in the line of normal descent here the testis can either be abdominal higher or lower abdominal then it could be inguinal where it could be into the canal or it could be emergent just at the superficial inguinal ring or it could be suprascrotal but not into the base of the scrotum so if there is any defect or arrest in this line of descent then this is called as undescended testis then comes the ectopic testis it has been hypothesized by the lockwood that there are various tails Uh, various tails of the gubernac predominant tail is the scrotal tail after that there are various tail like pubic tail perineal tail femoral tail superficial inguinal ring tail so what happens it is hypothesized that the, if there is weakening or breakage of this predominant scrotal tail then the testis can move to either of the ectopic sites so there are various ectopic sites named superficial inguinal pouch which is the most common ectopic uh, testis site followed by pubic or the penopubic area or transscrotal where the testis goes on to the into the other scrotal sac or the contralateral uh, scrotal sac then there are femoral and perineal ectopic test retractile testis are due to failure of the spermatic cord to elongate with the age this is one of the theory so what happens parents will say at times testis come down but it goes back at times some days they see testis into the scrotal sac while some days it is not there the sac is totally empty and also it is said that this could be due to the excessive contractibility of cremastic muscle a special feature uh, these retractile testis is that that testis could be milked down to the scrotum and it remains there without any retraction then there are ascending testis in ascending testis it is due to the failure of the proportional growth of the spermatic cord so initially when the child would have been born and in the early ages the testis would have been found in the scrotal sac but as the child grows the these testis become uh in intrainguinal or the parents could not appreciate the presence of testis in the scrotal sac then there are canalicular or the emergent testis that it could be in the canal and it's usually difficult to palpate them due to the overlying musculature but they can be palpated or could be just brought out of the superficial inguinal ring then other possibilities are that if a testis is not found or other causes of crypto orchidism being hypoplastic testis dysgenetic testis or absent testis another variant to a crypto orchidism which is called as vanishing testis vanishing testis is due to intra uterine or any perinatal vascular event taking place due to which there had been a testicular torsion so this lead to the absence of testis however in the in these cases the spermatic cord and the vessels could be appreciated on laparoscopy but there won't be any testis 
rather there will be just a yellowish patch or the hemosiderin uh, nodules at the site which would be uh, which would have been a possible site for a testis some people have reported that around 15 to 20% of non palpable testis accounts to vanishing test there are various factors responsible for uh, or the various causes of undescended testis or crypto orchidism one of them which we initially saw was a premature uh, infant born uh, before the stipulated time for descent of testis so they may be underweight there is a small for gestation there are numerous causes so birth weight prematurity they remains one of the predominant causes for uh, uh, undescended testis while some other uh, important causes being maternal obesity maternal diabetes history of cigarette smoking in mother uh, there may be some drugs which can cause uh, descent uh, issues or arrest in the descent and in today's time where ivf has become a very common modality it again because of the various drugs given uh, for the treatment or the support of the or the uh, continuation of the pregnancies the medical treatment that is being supplemented all these can be the causes for undescended testis along with this family history is another important factor it has been seen that is a, it is positive in 14% of the patients with undescended testis it's also noted that 7% of the sibling brothers of the patient with undescended testis will be having undescended testis and similarly around 4 uh, 3 to 5% of the fathers of patients with or uh, crypto orchidism uh, will have the same issues so there are various maternal issues there are environmental issues and certain genetic Uh, associations are also there undescended testis is, is one of the entities which is very common in most of the syndromes seen in the children and then there could be just sporadic or idiopathic causes now why i am concerned if the testis has not descended into the scrotal sac at the stipulated time it is because uh for normal development of spermatogenic tissues we need temperature lower than that of the core body temperature so if the testis remain intra abdominal the temperature around it will be the similar to that of the core and it will lead to impaired development of the spermatogenic tissue it has also been seen that leydig cells are the predominant cells which get affected due to this temperature change while sertoli cells are normal so leydig cells are the one which are predominantly controlling or are responsible for the spermatogenic tissue there are reports stating that by the 2 years of age 40% of the patients having udt would have completely lost their germ cell i am not talking about the endocrine function i am here specific specifically talking about the germ cell in for endocrine effect they may be having normal testosterone production but it is said that in certain group of patient there may be some dysregularity in the gonadotropin uh, hormones which is usually appreciated after the puberty so there will be decreased germ cells the testicular volume will also be decreased for the testis that has not descended then as you can see in the diagram just adjacent to it they will have infertility issues in a later date especially for the patients who will who have bilateral undescended testis so other things that can takes place uh, in undescended testis is torsion seen in around 20% of the uh, unoperated cases inguinal hernia which is due to the incomplete obliteration of the processus vaginalis then a fertility issue just uh, we have just discussed this 
another important uh, point here to notice that there is testicular epididymal association which is like there is a testis and then there is this epididymis which is going this has to be connected so that the sperms get transferred to semen but it may be there may be disassociations in cases of undescended testis so this again becomes one of the cause that the semen will be deficient in the sperms so it is of more concerns again especially if it is a bilateral cryptorchidism while unilateral uh, cases if one side testis is normal then the sperm development would take place from that side then there are malignancy risk which is said to be around 4 to 10 times more for the cryptorchidism cases and overall risk is less than 1% but there are reports suggesting the progressive degeneration of germ cell leading to dysplasias in these testes though it occurs at the same time in the years 20 to 40 years but yes the incidence is more when it's a case of Uh, undescended testes or cryptorchidism <coughs> now how do these patients present so the patient may just walk into our opd is stating that the either the scrotal folds are unequal or they could not appreciate the testes in the scrotal sac so it is predominantly a clinical diagnosis just to label it as cryptorchidism but for examination we have to pay attention to few things firstly at the we have to observe the scrotum that how is the scrotum formed whether it's there is the fullness due to the placement of testes uh, how are the rugosities so as you can see in this case this is the case of a uh, unilateral uh, undescended testes so here you can appreciate that the both the scrotal scrotal folds are unequal this scrotal fold is well developed with a fullness and testis could be seen while on to this side this uh, sac is or the scrotal this hemiscrotum is poorly developed and there is no fullness so the hemiscrotum can be normal in the retractile testes or the ascending testes or the ectopic testes and if the test hemiscrotum is poorly developed or uh, is uh, hypoplastic at times you will just see uh, this may be of very small size and they these patients uh, very light color will be there rugosities will be highly reduced so this is indirect marker that the testis has never descended to the this inguinal sac so then you again go and palpate and confirm your finding whether the both the testes can be palpated into the scrotum or not then another thing we can do since undescended testes are the most common chunk for the cryptorchidism we do evaluate or uh, examine along the inguinal canal there what we can do we can just go and palpate the in entire inguinal canal at time we can milk the entire inguinal canal and look for any rolling mass under our fingers so in this uh, picture you can uh, see we have marked this point so this was a point where there was a slight fullness and also on palpation we could appreciate a rolling body or the rolling mass underneath the fingers this was the undescended testes or into the inguinal canal then there are uh, other sites uh, if we don't find anything on to the uh, inguinal uh, area <laughs> then we look for at the other ectopic sites simultaneously we have to also assess entire genitalia where we we'll look for how the penis development whether uh, how is the urethral meatus whether there are any cordy or transposition so these are indirect marker and to tell us whether the, the child has associated disorder of sexual differentiation which we will be discussing in another lecture so one common differential diagnosis uh, in cases of uh, uh, undescended testes is the inguinal lymph node which may be enlarged due to infection or something 
so we have to pay attention with the regular observation we actually can make out that whether it's a lymph node or it's a testis testis could be moved down from its a uh, position while inguinal nodes are fixed now we have examined the child we and we know this is a case of crypto orchidism or undescended testis so predominantly it's a clinical diagnosis some people do go for imagings but to be very honest imagings have got very low sensitivity and specificity in cases of undescended testis and similar is with the hormonal assessment however if it's a case of bilateral undescended testis then you can go for hormonal assessment and at times if you are suspecting a case of disorder of uh, sexual differentiation then yes you may also go for additional investigations with ultrasound mri or maybe mr use as per the case may be but overall for a routine case or a clear cut case of uh, unilateral undescended testes no investigation is required i'll be just sharing the guidelines recommendations in after this slide so another important diagnostic uh, technique or the method for undescended testes remains diagnostic laparoscopy which is done for the impalpable testes so if a testes is palpated we know it's an uh, palpable testes we have to go for orchiopexy but what if we don't find any testes we are not able to appreciate any testes on examination then we have to go for diagnostic laparoscopy where we may encounter the following situations like the vas and vessa could be found which would be entering the ring so it is uh, there has been a arrest in the during the descent and testes is there in the inguinal canal then the testes may be intra abdominal only low or high so for this we can go for a single stage or double stage or a two stage procedure then there could be a vanished testis as we just discussed few moment before that vas will be vas could be appreciated vessels could be appreciated and a small yellowish patch of hemosiderin nodule will be there so that those are the cases of vanished testis and then in cases of dsd you may find some urine structure or abnormal gonads now while referring to the diagnostic guidelines it has been noted that various societies pediatric and urological societies have said that endocrine assessment is only recommended for bilateral udt not for all cases then exploratory laparotomy is recommended for impalpable udt and imaging studies are not recommended medical management don't play a role however it can be of some advantage in cases where there is hypogonadotropic hypogonadism or where there are receptor issue issues like partial androgen insensitivity syndrome so uh, this is all together a different topic uh, when it comes to disorder of sexual differentiation where hormonal supplementation may be needed so there at cg treatment lhrh uh, nasal sprays are being given but after 3 months to 6 month of life if the testes is not descended the medical management is not of much support for allowing descent of the testes some people debate that the medical management with the hormonal support can stimulate better uh, development of the spermatogenic tissues as we discussed in the initial uh, slides only that intra abdominal location of testes is deteriorates the formation of the spermatogenic tissues so it is recommended that the testes should be brought out uh of the uh, intra abdominal location so the recommended age for orchiopexy is 6 to 9 months now how we go about it the for palpable testes we go for orchiopexy where the testes is uh brought down into the scrotum and fixed over 
there it could be done utilizing inguinal approach or scrotal approach then there are non palpable testes so for that we have just discussed various scenarios where we uh, what we can encounter do, during the diagnostic laparoscopy now depending upon that for the testes which are there into the inguinal canal or just peeping uh, out of the internal inguinal ring those could be brought down utilizing inguinal exploration and ocopexy could be done simultaneously then for the cases where the testes is intra abdominal then one can utilize fowler stephens method for ocopexy which can be done either in one stage or in two stage then at certain centers where micro surgery is available there micro surgical auto transplant can also be done for retractile testes it cremastectomies are usually advised followed by orchiopexy some people say that the for retractile testes the contralateral orchiopexy can also be done in the very same setting now in uh, rare cases of uh, testicular torsion the emergency inguinal exploration should be done then uh, after detort uh, after detorting the testes one should observe whether the testes is viable or uh, not if not ocidectomy is uh, the preferred approach as if the testes is salvageable then ocopexy can be done for these patients like any other surgery ocopexy has also got certain set of complications earlier early complications being wound infection wound adhesion port site infection or hematoma formation then later on there could be testicular atrophy which is most uh, concerning part which is seen in around 0 to 40% of the cases it is more common with the high abdominal testes then there are testicular ascent which is seen in around 10% of the cases and has been attributed to the formation of fibrous tissue around the spermatic cord which don't allow the proportional growth of uh, spermatic cord then uh, vas deferens injury just i like you to pay attention to this chart that uh, how we go about a very comprehensive uh, uh, flow chart that is given by the american urological association in 2014 so a boy with undescended testes you have to look whether it's bilateral or non palpable if it is not so the case then you assess the child at the 6 month of age you send the child to some surgeon or a sur surgical uh, intervention should be sought if it is a palpable testes then directly you can go for orchiopexy utilizing scrotal or inguinal approach if it is a retractile testes at times it is said that you can monitor yearly because retractile testes usually becomes normal by 2 years of age so then if it's impalpable then again examination under anesthesia if you can palpate it then go for orchiopexy straight away and if it is impalpable then it is better to uh, go for abdominal exploration where you can go for diagnostic laparoscopy if the testes is identified you can go it single stage or two stage uh, fowler stephens if the vessels are entering the internal ring then you can go for inguinal exploration and orchiopexy if the it's a blind ending vessel or uh, vanishing or absent testes you can just uh, come out and you can just explain the same to the parents that there are no testes found or if you are suspecting some case of dsd then you have to evaluate accordingly and if there is nubbin you again have to counsel the parent that it's a just small tissue or the nubbin is there during inguinal exploration which again you have to bring out of the inguinal canal have to pack it uh, near the scrotum only but you have to tell the parents that similar uh, that so is the state for the testes that is all thank you